right. Well, we want to start the new year off right by being in church and going to meet. Uh, so we're going to have some singing. And what worked last year will work again this year. And uh, it's worked for a long time. And uh, old time religion might be out of style, uh, but it's still effective. And it still works. And I'm grateful uh, for the old time way. And so we're going to turn these folks loose and let them sing. We'll see what the Lord has got for us this morning. All right? You pray for them. Uh, as they say. And we still got a few folks out of town. I'd like to ask you to remember them. Please pray for them that the Lord will touch them and help them. Uh, and give them traveling mercy to get home and uh, get back, uh, you know, get back in the routine their schedule. All right? Amen. Amen.
We're going to begin reading in verse number 15. And uh, we'll read several verses from 10 and uh, give you a context. Uh, and then we'll try to give you the whole. Mark chapter number 15. Look at verse number 15. And so Pilate, willing to contend the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band and they clothed him with purple and planted a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him. And bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put on his own clothes and put his own clothes on him and let him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place, Galgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, whatever man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Let us pray. Father, this morning we know in this flesh was no good thing. Father, tonight, if anything of any significance gets done this morning, you will have to do it. I know my inability. I know uh, my limitations. Lord, I just want to be obedient. And Father, I want to do what you tell me to do. And this morning, Father, there's no greater way uh, to start off a new year than dealing with the cross. And so, Father, uh, without thy divine assistance, I cannot do it justice. I will certainly need the Spirit of God to help and anoint and use and speak to the hearts of your people. Lord, I pray you bless the message and the messenger. Lord, I pray you bless, bless the listener. Lord, if there be one here that doesn't know you as their Savior, our prayer is this morning, Father. The Spirit of God will move and speak, deal with, convict, draw, and save. May you have your will and have your way. And Father, what do you do for us? We'll be very, very careful. To thank you and pray to you. We love you. Thank you for being good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. In the passage that I just read to you, you will find that God includes many details. You will find that first of all, he deals with the person of the cross. In this text, it is revealed to us that it was no ordinary man who died on the cross that day. He was no mere mortal. He was not made uh, like you and I. But this man was different. This man was God in the flesh. You'll find this man when you study the text and you study your Bible that Jesus came supernaturally. He was born of a virgin uh, without a human father. You will find he grew up uh, spotless and sinless. Never messed up once, never did wrong Amen. once, never sinned Amen. once. Right. You will find he led a supernatural existence and a supernatural ministry. You will find that Jesus did what no one else could do. You will find that he healed the blinded eyes. He unstopped the deaf ears. He made the lame to walk again. 
and he rose the dead back to life. Yeah, right. You will find the person of the cross. <clears throat> God did not send an angel, nor did he send an emissary, but God sent the very best that heaven had to offer Amen. in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. R.G. Lee, when asked about who is Jesus, he said this, Jesus Christ, Son of Man without sin, Son of God with power. He's literature, literature's loftiest idea and his philosophy's highest personality. He is criticism's most supreme problem. He is theology's fundamental doctrine and Christianity's cardinal necessity. He's heaven's bread for earth's hunger. He's heaven's water for earth's thirst. He's heaven's glory for earth's shame. He's heaven's grace for earth's guilt. Amen. He is heaven's hope for earth's despair. Yeah. Heaven's love for earth's hate. Heaven's peace for earth's strife. Heaven's forgiveness for earth's sins. Heaven's life for earth's death. That, who, that is who Jesus Christ Amen. is. Amen. You will find He loved like no other. He forgave like no other. He operated like no other. You will find in the text the person of the cross. But secondly, you will also find the punishment of the cross. When you read this text, you will find that Jesus has been uh, has been whipped with a cat of nine tails. And you will find that a group of Roman soldiers has gathered together and they put a, a, a purple robe upon him and they begin to mock him. And uh, you right. begin, you'll find it, they begin to make fun of him. You will find it in other texts and other gospels where they smote our Savior in the face. You will find not only did it endure a scourging, but he endured a beating like no other. Right. You will find the Bible says in Isaiah 53 that his visage, his face, was so marred more than that of any man. He was beaten beyond recognition, scourged with a cat of nine tails. You will find that he is nailed through the hands and through the feet. And you will find a crown of thorns has been placed upon his head. You will find such punishment in the text. And you will find that he endured more than any man before. Crucifixion, one of the most painful ways to die. Right. It is a slow death. Right. It is a death of agony and despair. It is a death of pain and sorrow. It is a slow death. Right. Amen. You will find, first of all, the person of the cross. But secondly, you will find the punishment of the cross. Right. You will find he has been beaten and abused and finally crucified. Hung upon a cross, left to die as the world looks on and makes a sporting event out of it. It makes entertainment out of it. Right. You will find on the way up the hill to Calvary the crowds have lined both sides and people have come and began to pluck the beard out of his face as he stumbles upward with the cross. You will find they threw things and spit upon him. You will find they mocked him and made fun of him. And you will find as he headed toward Calvary's hill, he endured the punishment of the cross. Right. That is a love that I cannot comprehend. That is a love that I do not understand. How Jesus Christ could love sinners that much right. that He would be willing to bear their punishment, bear their penalty for their sin, Amen. and He would go through all that He went through just to redeem us, right. save us, have a relationship with us. I don't understand why He would go through all of that the benefit that he received, the people that he received. There's many days I wonder if I was worth it there's many days that I doubt uh, uh, that, that I know beyond a 
shadow of a doubt that the price paid for me that Jesus got the bad end of the deal. You'll see the punishment. You'll find that Jesus is suffering and bleeding and dying for sinners. You will find that He is taking our place. Heaven's innocence for earth's guilt. Right. You will find He know, He who knew no sin was made to become. Sure. Amen. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. Right. Yeah. Jesus is bearing your shame and your sin, my shame and my sin to the cross of Calvary. He is not dying haphazardly. This is not plan B. This plan did not catch God off guard. Right. But from Genesis chapter number 3 in your Bible, you will find this was, God, this was always God's plan. God has said that the man would come, the seed would come, and Satan would bruise his heel and he would bruise the head of the, of the serpent. Right. You'll find it's being fulfilled in our text. You'll find that Jesus must suffer, he must bleed, and he must die to, re to redeem humanity. Right. And so you'll find when you'll study this text, not only the person of the cross, you'll find the punishment of the cross. Number three, and this is where I want to get this morning, I want you to see the product. Of the cross. Do you realize there are everlasting eternal benefits reaped from this cross? Amen. Do you realize that God did not die in vain? But when Jesus dies upon the cross, the very gates of heaven have been opened. Right. And now the unworthy, the guilty, the sorry, the failure, the flop, can now come in yeah. having been made yeah. righteous yeah. through the blood of Christ yeah. and now may dwell in heaven for all of eternity right. simply because they are trusting in what He did and not what they did. Right. Right. Yeah. This morning I am not interested in proclaiming my own goodness for I have none. When I stand before God at the, the one day when I draw my last breath when I stand before Him I will not proclaim my abilities or my accomplishments. I will not say I was a preacher or a pastor or a church member or uh, I sang in the choir or I gave sums of money. I will not claim my own goodness right. because I realize that none of those things are enough to get me into that. Right. I will simply bow my head in, uh, as an unworthy sinner and say, why should I let you in? I will simply proclaim uh, what Jesus did at the cross as payment for my right. sin. Right. And God will accept that. Sure. God accepts the person of His Son. Yeah. God accepts the punishment of His Son. Right. And now my sin debt has been marked fully paid yeah, right. because of what yeah. Jesus has done yeah. Yeah. at the cross. That's right. and this morning I would like to say three things about the product of the cross. I will try to give you these and we will go eat some lunch and we will meet back here tonight. Amen. You will find, first of all, the first product of the cross is absolution. You say, what do you mean? That means full and total forgiveness. Right. Yeah. That means God absolves all of our sin yeah. in the blood that was shed at Calvary. Amen. They were singing about the blood just a moment ago. Do you realize there is no cleansing agent yeah. that can wash away your sin yeah. outside of the blood of Jesus? Right. Yeah. Do you realize no church membership, no good works, no baptism is able to do right. What the blood of Jesus can do. Right. Yeah. And the blood of Jesus can go deeper than the stain has gone. Yeah. Right. When we sin, it leaves a stain upon our soul. Every lie, every immoral act, every foul word, every everything, everything we've ever stolen, every wrong ever committed has stained the very soul of the individual. Right. Yeah. And when they come to Christ, 
And when they put their faith, hope, and confidence in the Savior and what he did at Calvary, when they bow and admit their sin and ask Christ to be their Savior, I'm glad this morning that God takes the blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary and applies it to our soul and washes us clean and forgives our sin. And listen, brother, this morning, the only way to have your sins forgiven is to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, you can uh, do good works and all of that, but hear me this morning. If there was any other way for you to make heaven your home, if there's any other way for you to get there on your own, then why would Jesus go through right. all that he went through? Right. Okay. If there was some other way, I'll tell you why he went through all that he did. Because this morning, there was no other way right. to redeem humanity. Right. And when there was no other way, when there was no other hope, Thank God Jesus stepped up and said, Father, I'll go. I'll wash away their sins. I'll suffer in their place. I'll die for them that they might go free. And when I got saved, God absolved me of all wrongdoing, of all guilt, of all shame. Thank God this morning, the product of the cross is complete, utter, and total forgiveness. Amen. You will find absolution is granted at the cross. And this morning, there's not a man on the planet that can absolve your sins. Right. You can confess your sin to men. They do not have the authority, nor do they have power to forgive you. That's right. right. And you can apologize. And they can forgive, but that's not enough to wash away your sin this morning. Yeah. Right. The old hymn writer said it this way, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. The song continues, continues to say, oh precious, is the flow Amen. that makes me white Amen. as snow. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, when I couldn't clean myself up. I'm glad when I had no alternative. Right. I bowed and got saved by grace and God washed away my sin. Yeah. Listen, this morning my record's clear in heaven. Yeah. All Amen. of my sins are gone. Amen. And hear me, I, the Lord has washed them away. And God treated Jesus Christ as if He were me, so He could treat me as if I am like Jesus. Yes, right. And brother, now I have absolution. My sins are gone, washed away. I didn't confess them to nobody. I went straight to the Lord, and the Lord washed them away. I am assured this morning that my sins are gone. Yes. That God didn't put them on file and say, I, I, I'll hang on to that in case you mess up again and then I can pull it out and beat you over the head with it. No, sir. Uh, when I got saved, God washed them all right. away never to be remembered yeah. again. I mean, brother, they are not under, the, they, they're not under the blood anymore. Yeah. The blood has washed them away. Yeah. They are gone yeah. this morning. All the rotten, all the sinful, all the nasty things I've ever done, yeah. done the blood of Jesus came, it, it dissolved them and washed them away and they may, they will never be brought up again. You say why? Because the blood of Jesus this morning and the cross of Calvary offers absolution for the sinner. You can be forgiven. You yeah. say my parents will never forgive me. My children will never forgive me. My loved ones will never forgive me. But hear me this morning. You can find forgiveness in Christ and have your sins washed the way it is. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. that it dissolves our sins. And this morning you will find the cross offers absolution. And you'll find that it can do what religion cannot. Religion can make you feel better about your sins. Right. But it takes the blood of Jesus to absolve. Yeah. Yeah. May I say, first of all, the product of the cross is absolution. But secondly, you will find the second product of the cross is access. 
Now because we have come to Christ, knowing we are sinners, knowing we have failed the Lord miserably, knowing we have sinned against the Holy God, knowing we have no hope or no help outside of the cross, we came and fell on, the, fell on our face and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I know I deserve your wrath and punishment. But I also know that Jesus took it at the cross. Right. And Lord, I, I'm asking you to forgive my sins and put it on the account of Christ. And that, at that point, God absolves our sin. Do you realize from that point forward you have access? Right. Listen, I am no longer a foreigner nor a stranger. Right. But I am part of the family. Amen. This morning, if you come to my house, generally, you'll knock on my door. You know why? You ain't part of the family. Right. Right. If I come to your house in the morning, before I ever walk in, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to knock on your door. You know why? I ain't part of the family. Right. Right. But hear me. When if I'm sitting at the house and my wife shows up, you know what she does? She just opens the door and comes on in. You know why? She's part of the family. Right. It gives her access that most people do not have. Right. If I'm in my office studying with my door shut, most people will, will leave me alone. And if they do need something, they'll knock on my door. My wife doesn't do that. You know what my wife does? She just reaches and grabs the door handle and comes right on, comes right on in. You know why? She's part of the family. Right. This morning, I don't have to stand outside and, 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 and knock on the door and ask the Lord to let me in. Right. No, sir, I'm already part of the family. Yeah. I have access to the Holy God of Heaven. Right. I was talking to Him uh, yesterday, and I was talking to Him last night. I've been talking to Him this morning. Yeah. You say, why? Because i got access. Right. Right. Listen, yeah. I can pray anywhere, anytime, and know beyond a shadow of doubt that the God of Heaven hears me. You say, why? Because the product of the cross is it gives the dirty and the wicked and the filthy not only does it cleanse them and clean them up, it also gives them access. Right. Uh, listen, I'm glad when the troubles of life come my way, I've got access to the God of heaven. I've got access to someone right. who can do something about it. Uh, hear me, I couldn't get a hold of Donald Trump if I wanted to. Right. You say, well, I don't have access. Uh, you say, I'd like to talk to one of those professional athletes. I can't talk to them. You know why? I don't have access. Right. But I promise you this morning, I've got something better. Yeah. I can go to the very right. creator this universe right. anytime and have access and be ushered right into this place. Amen. I got access to God. Yeah. For every burden, difficulty, and heartache, I can run to my Father. Hear me. He ain't got called waiting. Right. Amen. Somebody calls you and says, hey, hang on a minute. Somebody else is called. God don't have call waiting. Right. Yeah. I have unlimited access. God don't have business hours. Right. Yeah. Well, God's open from 7 to 3 or 9 to 5. No. 24 hours yeah. a day yeah. I have access. And God's not limited by time nor space. Right. You say, well, uh, if I want to get a hold of, uh, get a hold of God, I've got to come to the church. Not if you've been birthed into the family yeah. of God. Right. Here you can pray on in your car. You can pray in your living room. Yeah. I'm glad I can pray at church, but I ain't got to come all the way to church just to get access to God. I can pray in my bedroom, right. going down the road, uh, regardless of what's going on. I have access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and the Lord can hear me. I can be ushered into His presence. The Bible says, "Come boldly before the throne of grace, that you may obtain help in a time of trouble." I'm glad when things get too busy for me, when things overwhelm me. I don't know which way to go or what to do. I'm glad I can bow my head and all of heaven will be put into a silence as God leans over the throne and begins to listen to my cry. I'm glad, thank God, somehow, by way up yonder in the third heaven, of God's a sitting on his throne and way down here, I'm stuck in this sinful flesh and on a sinful earth, but I'm glad somehow God can hear and answer the prayers of his children because when yeah. we got the cross and when we got saved, we got access Amen. 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 I'm glad my sins are absolved. But I'm real glad I got access. Yeah. I can talk to God of heaven anytime I want to. Yeah. And to be honest, there, you might have problems this morning. You might come to me and try to tell me your problems. And may I be honest, I'll do my best to help, but nine out of ten times I can't help you. Right. I may not have the answer that you that you need, 
I may not have the resources available to help you. But hear me this morning. If you're saved, you ain't never took a problem to God what He could not yeah. answer. Amen. He has all the resources in this world and anything His children need, He ha He can, listen, brother, He can provide. Amen. And listen, brother, I'm glad this morning because of the cross of Christ, I can pour my heart, stuff I could never tell you, I can go in my prayer closet right. and pour it out to Him and tell Him right. the sorrow, the pain, the discouragement, the struggle, the battle, the burden, all of those things, I can pour my heart out and go beyond a shadow of doubt, there's God in heaven that's listening Amen. to me. Oh, yeah. I'm grateful. For absolution. I'm grateful for access. Yeah. But this morning, I'd like to say thirdly and lastly, the cross of the Lord Jesus has also produced an admonition. And when we see the cross, it reminds us of God's wrath and fury on sin. That's right. yeah. Someone said it this way. The cross serves as a warning. And that warning is this. If God spared not His own Son, He certainly will not spare you. Yeah. Amen. When we see the cross, the cross produces a warning for you and I. It reveals to us how much God hates sin. Right. If God would let that happen to His perfect, sinless, spotless Son, what do you think he's going to do to people who refuse to get saved? Right. If that's what God's wrath looks like, that's his only son. Yeah. If he would do that to his own boy, what do you what do you think he's going to do to sinners who won't get saved? Right. Amen. And that cross serves as a warning this morning. If you're here and you've never been saved. I implore, I beg, I plead with you to run to the cross. And we see God's wrath and judgment is poured out. We see God's wrath and judgment on sin. See, here's what God did. God took all the sins of humanity. And God looked at all the sin, every rotten, filthy nasty thing that would ever be done throughout history. Every violator, every lawbreaker, every individual, and every sin that they had committed. Every cuss word, every rape, every murder, every uh, robbery, uh, every rebellion, every uh, uh, foul word, everything. And God piled those sins up. Come here. And God piled those sins up. And turn around. And this is what He did. He took all of that sin and He put it all over His Son. And His Son takes those sin and He, he leads Him all the way up to the cross of Calvary. And He takes Him and He puts Him up here on the cross. And as He's hanging on the cross, do you realize what Jesus has all over Him? He's got your sin and my sin. And God judges right. our sin and your right. sin yeah. upon His own Son. And the wrath you deserved and the judgment you deserve. But God lets Jesus have it with both barrels. Right. And Jesus bears the full weight of iniquity and hey, sin. Right. And wickedness and ungodliness. And after three days, He, is, uh, he, he gets up from the ground victorious over yeah. sin and hey. hey. That sin has been paid for. He died it is finished. Washed away. And listen now, when we trust Him, He's already paid for our sins. And God won't double charge you for your sin if you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. My, how He suffered. My, what He went through. Just to make salvation available. This morning, there's no joking about sin. Yeah. Right. right. The Bible still says the wages of sin is death. Amen. Sure. Listen to me this morning. If you're here and you're not saved, you're going to stand before God one day. Right. And if you stand before Him unsaved, all of those sins we mentioned earlier have stained your soul. And when this flesh falls away in death, there stands that soul covered in sin. And as that soul stands before a thrice holy God, 
who is far too holy to look upon sin. He said, man, I can't stand it. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. His holiness cannot be in the presence of sin. Amen. And the angels will grab you and bind you hand and foot and cast you into hell. That's right. The difference between us being saved, that's the future of a lost person. The saved person, when they die, this flesh falls away. But because of the blood of Christ, that soul has been washed clean Amen. and spotless yeah. and made right. Amen. So now when, that, when the flesh falls away and that saved soul stands before the Lord, the Lord said, come on in. There is nothing to repel him. There is nothing to offend him. Why? Because it's all been washed away. In Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Now hear me. When the Titanic sunk many, many years ago, what year did the Titanic sink? 1912. <laughs> Logan's our resident Titanic. Yeah. Any questions comes in my Sometimes you've got to come nasty. He's going to bother you. <laughs> but when the Titanic sunk, nearly, I don't remember how many people died, like 1,500 or something, right? And when those survivors got back and word got out that the Titanic sunk, they hung up two signs at the point. People worried about their loved ones. Were they, were they, did they make it or did they not? And on those two signs, it simply had two lists. And on the list, it said this. Lost. And everybody who died was on that list. And saved. There were some very wealthy people on the Titanic that died. Oh, yeah. There were some very educated people on the Titanic that died. Amen. But when it was all said and done, there was only one list. Lost or saved. Yeah. Didn't say there were some good people, there were some bad people. Right. They were poor people, they were rich people. They were hateful people and there was kind people. No, they just had two sides. Lost and saved. Right. May I be honest this morning, that's what God's got. Sure. God's got one list. Lost or so. He ain't got one for good sinners and bad sinners. He ain't got one for kind sinners right. and hateful sinners. He just got two sides, man. Lost or so. Amen. And this morning, if you refuse to let Jesus pay for your sins, that means you'll have to pay for it. That's right. You know what that means? When you die, God's going to hit, hit you with both barrels of the judgment of God. Right. The wrath and fury of God. Amen. And you'll die and go to hell forever. Yeah. That, that ain't me saying that. That's what your Bible teaches. Yeah. Right. And so, hear me. I, I realized I was a sinner. Realized I didn't want to stand before God in that kind of shape. The sweet spirit of God convicted me and drew me to the place where I knew I couldn't do anything to save myself. And there at 203 Veneta Drive, apartment number four in Morganton, North Carolina, I made an altar out of my couch. And I said, I said this, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm lost. I'm going to hell and I deserve to go. Lord, I've violated your commands and I've trampled underfoot the blood of the Son of God. But Lord, I sure don't want to go. I deserve to go. I ought to go, but I don't want to go. Amen. And I know that Jesus died for me. And Lord, I ask you to save me and forgive me. And do you know what God did? He saved me. Amen. Changed my life for all of eternity. And now what was once a fear and a dread of death, right. now I am rejoicing in the fact that if it all goes south today, I'll be in heaven shot around Amen. the world. Amen. And listen, I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that Jesus bore my penalty and my punishment at the cross. May I be honest with you, this morning He bore your penalty and your punishment at the right. cross as well. Right. Yeah. And this morning, either you're going to pay for your sins or Jesus is going to pay. Right. God ain't going to sweep them under the rug. Yes, right. God's not going to ignore them and go, well, they really didn't mean it. No, sin is sin. Right. And God's holiness demands payment for sin. That's either your payment or Jesus Christ's payment on the cross. Right. And so the choice is yours this morning. If you'll trust Christ, He'll forgive your sins. He'll cleanse you and save you, give you a home in heaven. Or you can reject Jesus Christ and choose to pay for your own sin. And hear me, 
when you die, you're going to run into the judgment of God. You're going to die and go to hell forever. You say, how come I have to go forever? Because you'll never be able to pay for your sins. Right. You'll never get them paid for. And this morning, God's got one payment for sin. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ sacrifice at Calvary. Amen. Outside of that, there is no hope. There is no hell. There is no plan B or backup plan. Yeah. God has one plan to save humanity. And that is by trusting Christ yeah. as your Savior. Amen. That cross, it produced a whole lot of good stuff for the world. Yeah. But here, it also serves as an admonition for the unbeliever. God and His only Son sends Him to, to earth. And my, how He suffered. Suffered like no one before Him or since Him. Amen. The torment, the punishment, and the crown of thorns, uh, the abuse and the violence and the beating and the scourging that He endured. And then hung on the cross for six hours with nails through his hands and through his feet. That's what God thinks of sin. Yeah. We have a tendency to minimize sin and say it's not a big deal. I dare say gee, that God shows how what he yeah. thinks about it at the cross of Calvary. Right. Yeah. This morning I ask you this as Nicole comes. I'm done. I want to ask you this. If you had to die right now, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? You say, oh, I'm sure. Well, let me ask you. What are you trusting to get you there? May I say this on the authority of the Bible? If you're trusting anything else other than what Jesus did at the cross of Calvary, you'll not make it. Amen. You say, me and God's got our own deal worked out. God ain't got no special deals. Right. God ain't got no side deals. God's got one deal. Amen. Trust Christ to miss heaven. Right. And this morning, you say, I'm 100% sure, preacher, I'd go. What are you trusting to get you there? You say, I'm trusting in the blood of Jesus. I've been saved by grace. Wonderful. If you're trusting anything else, you ain't going to make it. Or, this morning you may say, Preacher, I'm here, and I'm not saved. Then listen to me. Let me tell you what you need to do. She's going to play and sing, and this is what I want you to do. She wants you to slip out of your seat. The Lord dealing with you about your eternal soul, about your eternal destination. Here's what you need to do. Slip out of your seat and count them. Find your way to this altar. Somebody will meet you in this altar with the King James Bible and show you what you've got to do to be saved. Amen. This morning, I can't make that decision for you. This morning, the Lord dealing with your heart about being saved. You've looked for happiness and contentment and peace everywhere else and you ain't found it. This morning, I'm telling you, the only place you're going to find peace is at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, do you know? Are you saved? Are you sure you're saved? You say, I'm not. Why don't you slip out of your seat and come? And so this morning, we're going to stand. I'm going to pray. And we're going to let her sing. And if you're not saved, I want you to come as we stand. Father, this morning, we're grateful, thankful to be in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for taking my sin. Lord, and placing it upon the Savior. Thank you, Lord, that it's been washed away in the blood of Jesus. Dear Father, this morning, if there be one here in our midst that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, one that's lost and undone, on their way to hell, Lord, I pray the sweet Spirit of God would do what I cannot, and that is convict, draw, and save. May you deal with them about their eternal destination. May you deal with them about what Jesus has done for them. Father, may you save them this morning. Lord, may the Redeemer receive the full reward of his sacrifice at Calvary. Father, I pray you'd save folks this morning. We're in desperate need, Lord. So I pray that the Spirit of God would convict her and save this morning. Father, we're beautiful. So we'll be careful. Thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name. Do business with the Lord this morning. Are you saved? Are you ready to meet Him? If you're not, I, I, I wouldn't walk, I'd run to this altar. And I'd ask God to save you.
was thinking about what I looked like before I got saved. This is what my sin, except it was black and nasty. And when I got saved, God took my sin and put it on His Son. And then marked the whole thing. Amen. Now, my sins are gone. You say, why? Because Jesus born to the cross. Amen. Paid for it right there. God accepted His sacrifice and His payment. And now, I bear them no more. This morning, if you're here and you're not saved, that's what you look like. you got sin all over you. Oh, we can't see it with the naked eye, with the natural eye. But spiritually, you got sin all over you. But if you'll come to an altar and trust Christ as your Savior, God will take every rotten sin you've ever committed, take all of them, not some, not most, but every one of them, and place them on His Son, and mark them, mark all your sins, paid in full. Amen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing one more verse. Nobody moves. We're done. But we're going to sing one more verse. Sing that first verse one more time. Are you ready? Are you saved? Jesus for cleansing and forgiveness. He'll save you. Please come be with us. All right, you're living in the city.